Welcome, one more day to Enharmony. Today we are going to dive deep into some questions that may help us understand better our true being, a being which must flourish, dissolving false personalities, freeing us from rebirth, what some call reincarnation, even though it's necessary to clarify this issue because not everyone has a soul able to experience different types of rebirth. We must see what can return, how, why, um, and how the only possible liberation is by means of gestating different degrees, different stages of the divine soul. A subject which I will expand next week, but today we are going to touch a little bit. And first of all, we must remember that our true being is an emanation of the great primordial source, the so-called Father of Lights, the primordial origin. And therefore, our being shares the same essence. We have a will of unconditional love, a life that has not been modified genetically, so it doesn't need improvement of any kind. And therefore, we don't have free will to choose between good and evil, good and bad. True life is absolutely good in itself. And true life is known by a non-fragmented, unified conscience, which mm, lives, perceives an infinite blissful serenity. These are the qualities of what we may call divine personality, lacking a better term, and these qualities are precisely what can stop the manifestation of false personalities in us. Therefore, we must also be aware and honest, acknowledging that mm, as humans we are usually dominated by false personalities, and we also have sub-personalities or partial manifestations of our true authentic mm. personal essence. There is not a personality with a single will and conscience. There is rather a manifestation of different states. Sometimes we are asleep, sometimes we are awake. But many different false personalities struggle within our ourselves. They fight against each other to take control. And among them we can find many very destructive. For instance, we have the victimistic personality full of self-pity, the glutinous personality, the criticizing judge, the coward, the greedy, the joker that demands attention from others by doing stupidities. We can find many. And we must realize these are not just simple manifestations of compassion or hate, greed. Each false personality has all those qualities because each personality is a complex network of physical behaviors, postures, actions, emotional reactions, mental habits. Actually we can trigger mechanical personalities activating them by means of physical postures, negative thoughts, for instance, think of a boring job without motivation and you will activate the lazy personality. Find your motivation and you will have the emergence of a more active personality. But these false personalities very often show up by reacting to external stimuli. They can be adverse situations, pain, criticism from others, or even influences from disembodied beings. Later on we will see what these beings can be. So we need to understand the origin of these false personalities and see that in general human personalities are formed due to perceptions and unconscious reactions that generate what is known as psychic impressions or imprints in the East 
they are known as samskaras and they are energetic configurations that crystallize and are stored in the subconscious and unconscious level of the psyche the energy body and even the layers of deeper soul and they are the ones that move us to act mechanically manifesting these false personalities and the only way mm, to observe them is by acquiring a powerful mind deep level of attention and this is why it's very important to cultivate attention in brief periods of time for instance 20 minutes or 30 minutes in the morning before breakfast and before sleeping in a small sittings, silent sittings observing the unconscious and subconscious levels as we did in the videos of cosmo communication and certain spheres of sensory awareness and it's also important to interact with others not only family members and friends but people who are in the same boat of inner work so to say to share impressions and also to notice how false personalities emerge in frictions discussions with others because we can see ourselves mirrored in others everything that we hate in others is something that we have not worked inside so noticing this gives us the chance to manifest the authentic life personality in us and the great tragedy is that false personalities are reactivated again and again in our daily life but also in existence after existence in many cases as we read in Ecclesiastes 3.15 whatever is has already been and whatever will be already is Elohim reestablishes what has passed and this explains for example the phenomenon of the children with talents the prodigies and in many cases they simply have souls with so many repetitions of the same life or other existences on earth that they have already worked certain technical qualities and capacities and these are not necessarily spiritual there are many cases in history for instance Mozart the composer was able to mm, compose musical pieces at the age of five and he said that many compositions came to his mind fully made actually I have witnessed the same thing in my own life since I began to compose music at the age of 12 I began to notice that in many cases while I was improvising on the keyboard and the piano the compositions flowed from my unconscious spontaneously and sometimes they came fully made in one single improvisation I also have um, memories from other existences lived by my own being and even other versions of this same life and this is because sometimes the divine soul connects itself to the same life in order to fulfill a particular mission for example in the two previous versions of Fernando that I know everything ended too soon because Fernando mm, lost his sense of vital mission and this led to fatal accidents and in the present life mm, I'm fully immersed in my mission so my body feels revitalized and I have been able to overcome processes of mm, illness and sometimes repetitions also take place mechanically because the souls are so unconsciously attracted to their life that they go back but this is not always the case it depends on the type of soul and obviously it's also true that not all memories of other existences are necessarily true because they can be implanted by other beings however um, many memories are indeed real uh, they come from other lives and the divine discernment 
can distinguish between them. But very few people can remember because not everyone has developed um, a mental consciousness. Not everyone has an embryo soul with personal conscience able to return. And what we must understand is that vital impressions begin to be attached to the embryo souls because these are emerging consciences that have a personality that grows and has to be completed. And this personality begins to distinguish the true loving life within, even if it's just a tiny light. But obviously, if the soul embryo does not mature into baby soul and child soul and so on, then false personalities take control and divine light is obscured by false garments. Unfortunately, the embryo souls and baby souls often get trapped in the cycle of unconscious rebirth, which does not help to evolve in general. Even some evolved souls get confused because rebirth takes place within a cycle which is very overwhelming. It's like a roller coaster. And this cycle, as some of you may know, is known as the wheel, the Gilgul in Hebrew. Just as in Greece, myth uh, spoke of the goddess Circe, who nullifies the will of humans by turning them into reasoning animals with lower passions. And this cosmic circle is marked by 12 main zodiacal signs, which on one hand refer to the 12 psychic configurations, which are the ones that we saw in the video entitled The 12 Psychotypes. If you are interested, watch it, because it's full of information. However, those 12 aspects are in turn an earthly reflection of the so-called 12 celestial princes or rulers known in Greece as Arjontoi. In Greece, they were also known as the 12 gods of Mount Olympus who split the earth into 12 sections in order to rule over humanity. As Plato tells in the books like Timaeus and Critias. And in Hebrew, these rulers are known as Sarim, princes, which are part of the Elohim, the artificial astral intelligences in the body of planets, which govern humanity and natural events in general. Many are today speaking of archons, ignoring all this, but this, this is the problem of having too much information without mm, knowing the source of these ideas. And some Kabbalistic teachings say that the princes are mm, 70 in number because they rule over the so-called 70 nations. And we also hear about 72. And all this is because the circle of 360 degrees can be subdivided into 12, 36 and 72. All these are harmonic fragmentations. Actually, some traditions also speak of 12 main sarim or princes, angels, with 6 wings and 12 multiplied by 6, 72. 72 is also the sum of the geometric pyramid made with the tetragrammaton, yud he vav he. You can see in the image and sum up all numbers. And those 12 main princes, which become 72 by fragmentation, are not um, eternal personalities living in some celestial throne. They are actually artificial intelligences, frequencies of light, vibration, angles of distorted light in a space-time. And they form the cosmic ego, which is generated by the movement of celestial bodies. And this astral time is what generates 12 psychotypes. And when these are not illumined, they form 
fallen personalities known in ancient times as imprisoned spirits, even though they belong to actual races. Some of them are ancestral humans that live within the Earth. But in general, we can say the 12 psychotypes are astral intelligences of humanity mixed with animal passions on Earth. Curiously, the word demon comes from the Greek daimon, and this is linked to fate and personal character. As the sage Heraclitus said, character is for man his daimon, his destiny, as we find sometimes translated. So when we hear about the 72 demons in Kabbalistic stories, this can be seen as 72 characters. And the ancient myths also tell about rebel gods who fell fighting against the 12 demonic characters, against the princes Elohim, Zeus. And those rebel gods were Prometheus, Enki and company. These gods were often represented with archetypes half man, half animal. For instance, Enki sometimes appears as the water carrier, Aquarius, and sometimes as a man with goat legs, or even as a goat fish, which is Capricorn, the sign that marks the so-called gate of the godly men. Anyway, I leave mm, this information in an article essay, which I will write on the blog, The Music of Wisdom, and also in the web, in case you want to go deeper. And for now, just realize that the emerging souls that enter the cycle of rebirth or, let's say, a spiritual evolution, are always caught under the power of these 12 or 72 dark psychotypes, which must be harmonized or dissolved in some cases. However, this can be very deceptive and we must break the spell, because in reality, evolving by means of repetition is something practically impossible. Reincarnation is a dual and cruel system where the possibilities of evolution are very limited. Even for souls inspired by the gods of antiquity, Atlantis, for instance, was populated by the so-called godly men. They develop amazing spiritual technologies. And where is Atlantis today? Is under the water. Almost nobody remembers. And this is because here on Earth we always find very destructive influences. Nowadays, we are not only finding genetic problems, environmental pollution, poisonous food, poisonous water, climate disasters, but also the influx of energetic insects that we don't know very well, disembodied personalities, some of which are those popular light orbs that we see floating around in videos and pictures. And we also have the influence of the infamous evil genie, the wicked genes, who are astral beings coming from other ancestral lines of evolution. And this whisper evilness in human psyches, acting from the fourth dimension. They even try to sneak into our energetic bodies to inspire lower passions and eat from those passions. Many times, the negative impressions are deposited by them because they want to generate false memories, delusions, trigger false personalities in which they can inhabit. This is how they cause the fall of humanity. A humanity whose ignorance makes people very confused and overwhelmed by this chaos. This is why it's important to communicate these truths. It's the only medicine. And all this proves how ridiculous is to accuse humankind of causing catastrophes, calamities, and even climate change. Obviously, negative energies have an influ influence on the planet, but humans are not the main cause. In the article I leave on the blog, you have the platonic story of how the Earth was hijacked by foreign souls that came from other regions not the earth, and they became tyrannical 
lords over humanity, dominating the masses, and even promoting temples of sacrifice to appease planetary forces. This was actually what was done by King Solomon, building the temple for Israel. They became involved in animal sacrifices, something which is not spiritual at all. All this was foreign technology that never worked because in reality it was a copy of the great wheel of soul recycling which is the largest system of sacrifice. What the astral ar architects mm, did was forming a system to refine energies by means of modifying genetics and storing souls in planets like the Earth causing mm, death and suffering all over and in these conditions it's very difficult to evolve of course I'm not accusing anyone uh, I'm aware these are artificial intelligences, cosmic forces that mm, cannot be treated as a conscious divine being but in the same way we should not worship mm, those mechanical forces as religions do. Actually, they are regarded by many as the Creator, the Creator God, the Lord. Ignoring this Lord Creator is creator of a fallen matrix, a fallen world, and maker of soul pottery that in most cases perishes. In reality, those forces are a blind step model that dissolves the elements of the soul psyche when there is no evolution of consciousness and it's true that in this matrix there are also positive forces that help us it's true that we are also given a chance to receive light and have an evolving soul but the chances are very limited because of negative influences coming from other beings on the earth not always the mechanical forces of nature and all this I'm saying is not a fancy of mine you can find that for instance in a passage of King Solomon he says remember your creator before the silver cord is snapped before the golden bowl is broken the pitcher is shattered at the fountain the wheel Gilgul is broken at the cistern and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit Ruach returns to the Elohim who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the prophet, all is vanity. This is found in Ecclesiastes 12.7 onwards, and obviously he was probably referring to the fallen creator of the matrix. Anyway, we can say that by remembering our true origin from which we were emanated as light beings, not created, we can actually develop our being and escape death going back to our true home after our mission. On the contrary, when the judgment of physical death arrives, if there is not a soul cohesion, soul development, each element of the soul returns to its origin. This was known in many ancient religions, for instance in Egyptian religion. I made a video about that last year, the twins of the soul I think I call it, and we must understand that the physical body or picture, as it is now called in that passage, um, dissolves, as well as the silver cord, which is probably the astral lunar magnetic connection, linked to the golden bowl, which is the astral solar body, and these bodies were even mentioned by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. And these bodies are not immortal, even though they can exist longer than the physical body and the vital soul, the nephesh, which also perishes after living a life of animalistic passions. As we read in Ezekiel 18.20, the vital soul or nephesh that sins will die and the son will not bear the sin of the father, and so on. 
And this is a way of saying that the vital soul is dissolved by nature, recycled as residual energy, and used in maybe animals or even the psyche of humans. But it has no continuation. We cannot say it reincarnates. As for the Ruach, is the personal spirit with a collection of false personalities or even an embryonic uh, conscience, a true personality. But in any case, this Ruach personality returns to the Elohim, the source from which it came, but only to be reintegrated into another human being, to keep evolving, carrying obviously the memories or impressions from previous existences. And from these impressions, personalities grow again. That would be mechanical reincarnation. There are also conscious reincarnation, but we will see that later. In general, we must understand that in this system, dust returns to dust, whether it is stellar dust or earthly dust, it doesn't matter. As Paul said, men are only given to live once and then judgment. We find that in Hebrews 9.27. And all this dual scenario of sacrifice is what some prophets began to expose. For instance, in Isaiah 53, divine conscience is compared to a lamb taken to the slaughterhouse, tormented by the existential birth, the yud heav of hay, the false I amness, we may say, which in this case is the 72 distorted light vibrations of space-time, the cosmic ego, whose energies can obviously be dissolved and even reharmonized, purified, reintegrated into the true I amness of life, that is the cosmic work. And the greatest revelation in this sense came from Yeshua. Ishua, as he was called in Aramaic, because he not only expelled the merchants from the temple because they were selling animals for sacrifice and other things, but he also burst the system of depths, Hubim in Hebrew, which obviously was associated to the cycle of rebirth and payment, release of energies to the rulers, the Arjontoi, cosmic forces which demand energies from humanity, blindly, and even other beings who demand energies to keep existing themselves, but those are fallen gods, so to say. And many speak of soul contracts, the positive aspects and bad aspects, and make the souls reincarnate depending on those depths. However, Yeshua, Yeshua, broke mm, this dynamic because he thought that the inner messiah has a universal conscience which is pure and it must grow cancelling all karmic contracts all karmic debts true light beings do not come to pay for sins we sacrifice ourselves as an act of love to help others and this is in itself priceless we see this in, in john 9 when the disciples ask Ishua if a man was born blind because he or his parents mm. sinned. And Ishua replied, neither he sinned nor his parents, but he is blind, so the works of the divine being manifest in him. And those works are obviously the manifestation of the divine soul, the true loving light full of blissful life, which cancels all contracts and possible transgressions. We all make mistakes, but these are not ours. These belong to the false personalities. And the Master is saying that the only meaning of darkness is to give birth to the true living light inside. And just as the husks of the seeds fall on the earth, break, giving birth to flowers, trees, life. And obviously, the question of mm, the disciples implies they had in mind 
the pre-existence of the soul in the Gilgul because if they thought that a man could be blind because he had seen it could only have been in a previous life actually this idea of the pre-existence of the soul was known by some members of the early church the Christian church Origen, for instance he was from the 3rd century and being one of the main church fathers he used this idea of pre-existence of the soul to explain why some people live virtuous lives or unhappy experiences it depends on what the soul did in a previous experience however in the 6th century the corrupt emperor Justinian decreed the elimination of all references to reincarnation and pre-existence of the soul in the New Testament and the Old Testament even though <laughs> they forgot to eliminate John 9 and other passages but their goal was to promote the social control by means of the belief in heaven and hell if you are a good sheep and obey the church you go to heaven but if you are a rebel or an heretic then you go to hell with Satan and not even God will take you out of there ironically many ignore that um, hell can be lived on earth because it's a state of consciousness it's not a place and reincarnation itself is a type of hell the repetition of fallen personalities in us is the worst hell however as we have seen the person does not reincarnate as a whole but rather soul components are simply dissolved and recycled in some cases sometimes there is actually a rebirth or reactivation of personalities from vital impressions attached to the conscience of the soul but obviously only a divine soul with enough understanding with the neshema the mental breath of understanding can reconnect mm. consciously to other lives as part of the gestation process but mm, the divine soul does not incarnate or reincarnate in a physical body actually true being acts upon the astral body and gestates itself within mm. those subtle bodies it continues where the process stops but this is part of the following subject next day we will see how Ishwa demonstrated these steps of gestation of the divine soul from the embryonic state to the baby soul, child soul and the divine man which is actually our goal on earth because the gestation, the Ibur of the Nefesh, the vital soul and the gestation of the Ruach, the conscious personality are not enough it's necessary to develop the Neshema, the mental breath of understanding to make us child, souls, aware of the soul journey and able to make stable the vital being of life, Chaya expressing in all circumstances the true life and will of the Holy One who shines on all darkness without being deceived by anything or anyone but let's ponder all this gradually remember that I'll leave an expanded article about all this in the blog and web thank you for listening with attention and for now blessings of genuine light so the true loving blissful life manifest in all of us.